All right, welcome back to Idaho Art Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. So today we're going to talk a little bit about drawing trees. So we're studying in the classes a little bit about drawing landscapes. Um, and of course, for those that take my painting classes and my landscape painting classes and plein air painting classes, uh, trees come up a lot. And so we're going to just talk a little bit about drawing trees. Now, we can certainly, I mean, usually we start the conversation and We've probably already had this conversation if you've been in my classes before, but we can talk about the basic shapes of trees. That you've got, you know, your, you know, your your pine trees that have a very much what's their basic shape, rectangular, you know, that ha you know have a little, you know, looks almost like a some sort of lollipop or some sort of strange <laughs> conical shaped lollipop. Uh, you have a lot of your trees that again are very much. You know, sort of egg-shaped like, now depending on the tree, they may get wider as they come out. So you have some trees that get a little bit, you know, they they have the crown and then they get a little wider from the base, like so. And of course they could be taller too. Uh, so you can have trees that are, again, more, more shaped like this. And these are just basic ideas. Okay, that, and again, this is a lollipop too. Slightly different type of lollipop, but you know, still has a, a lollipop feel. Uh, and you know you can have trees that are they're in, that are in between these. You can have trees that are very uh, rectangular uh, in terms of the the way the or you know that, that their orientation is, or well the, well the, they will round a little bit you know but they're still very tall but then they will round like so. So you can have shapes like that. That's almost a feather like shape. If we look at this, this looks like you know almost like a feather or something like that. Uh, you can of course have, I think there's cypress trees again that are very, very, very tall again, much like a feather shape. So you've got all these, you know, sort of basic types of tree shapes that you can see in nature. Uh, again, you know, this is the, the feather shape. Um, you know, you could have you know, other types of trees, birch trees and aspen trees. You know, again, where you, it might come up and the, and the crown might be a little bit higher up on the tree like so. But these are just just the basic sort of silhouettes, if you will. And of course, they're all not, you know, they're not going to be perfect like this. They're obviously going to have, you know, you're going to have some ins and outs on your trees and all this sort of stuff as far as that goes. Uh, depending, again, on the type and the variety and so forth and so on. You know, and again, that's just a caricature of a tree. That's not truly what a, you know, what a tree looks like. It's just a, it's an idea to make it a little less, a little more random. So it's, it's not near as, you know, as, uh, as what some people might call these static, but trees just are not this, you know, they're not lollipops. They would have some sort of randomness. Um, so of course, this is the first part of trees asking yourself what the shape is. Uh, but after that, then there's, and, and everyone pretty much, you know, can I kind of identify that. You want to be careful that you never want trees to look like lollipops. You know, you're going to want them to be more random. You're going to want them more in this vein over here where we have a much more irregular outline as opposed to symmetry. It's, this is, you'd call this approximately symmetrical, but it's not perfectly symmetrical. And so with trees and nature and rocks and things like that, uh, you'd be dealing with things that are not the exact same on both sides. They're similar, but they're not the exact same. But some more important things about, about trees that we want to think about, even more so than the basic shape. And sometimes we don't think enough about this. And the first thing is the, is the structure of the tree. What does the tree look like? And We tell students in the class all the time that trees are basically just trunking sorts of cylinder systems. So you'd have your cylinder here, you know, and then, and you know, depending on the tree, it might, you know, come over this direction. So now you've got another section of cylinder. This is looking more like a, like bamboo, but, uh, and then you might have where, where this branch is off, you know, this direction. And so you have, you know, again, another little cylinder coming this way, and then this might branch off this direction. 
Um, you know, so again, you'd have uh, another little cylinder over here. And again, you could start to branch off these, these cylinders into other, you know, trunking or, you know, where, where they're, you know, they're, they're not trunking, they're, they're branching, pardon me, branching systems uh, with this, you know, that, that's both, is the idea of how trees will, you know, will start to branch and that will start to branch. And, and the important thing is, is, to under, is that as branches go further away, of course, they're gonna be getting smaller. The other thing about branches is, and this is a good time to bring this up because this right here almost doesn't, doesn't quite work because when you have a main branching system or a main trunk, and then that trunk branches off, and if you have this cylinder here, which has that much volume, supposedly a branch, and this branch here that has, again, um, usually you have one arm coming front, one arm going behind, so you can use some overlapping, but you also have this arm going this way, or this branch. Think of trees almost like uh, when you're drawing people. So some people will talk about, you know, talk about um, well, there's a lot of gesture to trees. And so uh, you go out in winter or fall, right after fall, depending on how, you know, I'm in the West, so our winters are not all that, all that harsh where I'm at. Uh, but, you know, go in after fall and draw some trees that don't have leaves on them so you can see how the arms branch and things like that. Um, but what I was getting at is that if this is this wide right here, the sum of these two parts, so that's that wide, which, you know, it's widest part, this is already more than half of the tree, and this is its widest part is more than half of the tree. So that is wrong. If the volume of this branch here and this branch here, and you add those two together, their widths, and if their two widths together is wider than where it branched from, that is incorrect. And so that's the biggest thing when we're thinking about branching uh, systems is that whenever it branches, the, the sum of those branches have to be less than the arm that it branched off of. Otherwise, it's, it's not right. That means, so, um, and you might be able to find in nature some, you know, it's nice to be like, well, you know, there's, there's trees out there that could be mutated and they could be, well, they, there are. You'll see some funky things in nature. However, it will still look weird. You know, it doesn't matter the fact that you could find, you know, you know, somebody with, with uh, or, you know, whatever, a tree with some, that goes against the norm. But, you know, unless you're trying to, unless you really make it look like that's, that you're trying to do a, a tree that's not normal, it's going to look like you just don't know how to draw trees. And so... The, this 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 idea of, of this things branch that they get smaller is, is again a very very important thing to understand that again these branches are getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner as they go further and further and further and further out. So if I wanted to make this correct, well then this branch here we would have to thin it down. Okay. Um, so we'd have to thin this one down. We'd have to thin this one down, and if we did that, well, then we'd have two arms that could be coming off of this tree that would work, as long as we cut enough off of it that that's no longer more than half, and it's not, and that's no longer more than half, which it's not quite. So to these two together are not wider than the entire trunk that's, that's, uh, that's branching off. Uh, so you want to be careful of that. Now, if there's a third branch, Sometimes people are like, well, what if I got a third branch? And if I took all three of the sum of those things together, they're obviously wider than that. But even, even if you had four branches or whatever, this is kind of weird the way I brought this out here. But let's say this was, you know, an, another branch behind here. It would rarely be right in the middle. Like this is about the same as there. You almost never have that happen, so it looks kind of strange. Uh, you know, but even if you had a fourth branch, um, we, we, we use two branches because as long as these branches are the, about the same size, it'll work. It'll look like that tree's fine. It's just that if you take any two branches and they're wider than the, 
the width of the tree, well then you get then you got issues, you got problems. So again, as long as I had something right here, let's say we brought another one in, we have this one here. Whoops, that's too wide. So we have to thin it down. So let's say this is in front. That's in front of this one. Well, now we've got four branches on here, right? But as long as any two of those aren't wider than this, you're fine. So the biggest thing is, is remember this idea. Um, are you going to lose sleep over it? No, but it's, it's good to kind of, you know, think about that. Like this right here is still probably just a little bit thick as this branches off of here. People will say, well, it divides the energy of the plant. And so the, the energy gets smaller and smaller and smaller and less and less and less as it goes further and further away from the of running from the center. Now the other thing to, to think about, and sometimes we don't think about, is you know the, the tree has roots, right? And you know, many times those the, those root systems can, you know, we could start to make this look like a little lightning or whatever, so it looks more like roots. But the idea is that the roots of the tree many times will be just as tall as, now there's different trees and there's different varieties and some roots on certain trees go deeper than others. But in general, the rooting system of a tree normally has roots that are as deep below ground as it is above ground. Now there are certain exceptions to that. If you've got some sort of scrub juniper growing off a rocky ledge in say the, you know, the Grand Canyon or something, uh, well, that's not true either, because some of those they'll they will they will snake their their roots down the sides of the the uh, the rock and be and the roots are actually bigger than the tree itself. You know, I know some trees that have hundred foot long root systems that try to do that along the rock face, but something like a, a scrub juniper, uh, not scrub juniper, sagebrush, not necessarily won't necessarily do that. So we, sometimes you know we're just seeing, you know, maybe this is the ground here. And, and we've got this tree here, and we're just barely seeing some of these, you know, root systems coming up out of the ground and attaching to the tree. Um, just, just remember that these root systems are going down. Obviously, they have to draw water and all that good stuff. And so many times the, the branching systems are just as, you know, tall below ground as they are above ground. Um, and, of course, this is kind of funny. This is, this is not what we'd call great. This would come here, and maybe this would go over that there and maybe the ground will come around that whatever but um, I want to think about the roots the other thing is is that a tree never slams into the ground straight down now I'm gonna I'm gonna show some like little caricatures of trees where they're kind of doing a little bit of this that never happens if we look at this tree what happens to the tree is it gets it, it, it comes out it comes out it, fl it it widens as it goes into the ground and it does that because it gives that tree more stability by doing that. Okay, that's another very important point that the that the trunks get wider as they go into the ground. They don't just slam into the ground like a pole. This looks like a you know telephone pole. This is a tree. If this wanted to look like a tree, we'd have to start to bring this thing out a little bit to show that it's growing into the ground and anchoring, and it gives it more stability. You know, so we want to look for that in trees. Um, so for those that are taking the class, what I want you to do is draw some trees this week. And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you a, uh, a concept for dealing with what we will just call the caricature of, the, of drawing trees, drawing a caricature or the idea of trees. And so let me show you what we've got here. So let's say we started with just a basic you know, what looks to be like a lollipop. And it basically is just a, it's not hardly, it's just a small egg shape with, you know, that again, looks like, you know, or, you know, whatever, um, cotton candy or something, but all trees have form. So this is the, this is the drawing of the form of the tree. This is going to be a tree that's kind of this sort of egg shape. And so trees always have this going on is that they, that they are, and three-dimensional object, and all three-dimensional objects have, you know, they're going to have core shadows, dark tones, reflected light, uh, you know, maybe, you know, some cast shadow, uh, middle tones, light values, you know, maybe even highlights. So it's going to have some of that form shadow. Now, 
it's going to be broken up by some of the detail, but understand that there's going to at least, you know, whenever you get a tree, you're going to at least see three to four of these six uh, different form shadows on a tree. So first we'll start with just the egg shape. And uh, I want you guys to, and we could go back to these other trees and you could, you could go ahead and, you know, do, you know, in fact, if you're taking the class, I'd like you to do three, at least three of these, the, the feather shape, you know, some sort of, you know, the, the, the uh, sort of the pine tree, which is a cone and this is kind of a sucker and, and try to do a quick, you know, a little value study of them. Then the next thing I want you to do, uh, and it's really the combination of, of what I'm going to show you uh, that makes something feel like a tree. And this is stuff that it's, it's that I was taught. This isn't something that I came up with on my own. Uh, it's very common sorts of stuff. And this is sort of the way that uh, landscape architects and, and people like that, you kind of got a lot of this training because you know, they did a lot of trees. And so they wouldn't do, you know, instead of doing portraits of trees, they need to bang out trees really quickly. And so this is really good to help us think about trees, the basic idea of trees, and how to make something look like a tree. So then we're going to go to the next two parts of this. Okay. And that is we're going to take this and we're going to now shade it like it's a sponge. Grab a sponge out of the kitchen and put a light on it and you're gonna, it's still gonna have form. So I kind of, this is actually the lights coming from this side, but it still has light to dark, but now it has texture. So there's little holes in that light to dark because it's now a sponge. So I'd like you to try to take the, one of these little guys, you can either take this guy or you can do the little, the, the little egg guy and try to make them like a sponge. Try to shade them from light to dark, uh, skipping little areas. And if you need to, grab a sponge out of the sink, put it next to you, take a look at it, and try to envisual, to visualize what it would look like, okay? That's the next part. This is gonna help us get texture for the trees. This still looks like a lollipop, but now it's got a lollipop with texture, and it looks a little more tree-like. It would have to be super sculpted. This is like a tree out of Disneyland. No one would ever. This doesn't look like a natural tree whatsoever. The next part of this is branching systems. So this right here, we have again, the tall trunk of the tree. All right. And then we put these plates on. We have plates on the front side. These are the front side plates. We have plates that are bending around and going around the corner. So these plates are bending around the back side of the tree. And that's what this represents. This represents a tree, a branching system. And this looks like some sort of contemporary idea of a tree. It's basically a trunking branching system with plates. That's what a tree kind of is. And so again, this turns a corner, turns a corner, turns a corner, turns a corner. And then we have these back plates. Okay. And each one of these plates has a branch that goes to it. Okay. So this is, again, we still have form shadows. It's dark on the back side, getting a little light, you know, a little lighter here and even lighter still here because the light's coming from this side. But we've got little plates. And again, I'd like you guys that are in the class to try to kind of, you could look at a tree or you can just try to look at this and, and, uh, and you know, pause the video and try to, try to replicate that. But the idea is that you want to be able to take a branch to each plate. That goes to that one, that goes to that one, and you're going to get some that overlap, okay? And you're just going to make some plates, okay? Little plates like so. Okay, so what we're going, what's cool is we can take, so when we have a tree, we're going to have, first is going to be the basic form shadows. Then we're going to have, and this is, of course, we, we took that shape and we made it irregular, so that it's a little, it's still too symmetrical. This is a little less symmetrical, but we just made it a little bit like, you know, an, an irregular ragged sort of torn paper, sort of a feel to make it feel more like leaves. And then just that little bit of the sponge, you know, making it look like a sponge, uh, by putting texture on it makes it look like maybe those are leaves. If we then add branching system to this, we get a very interesting look. So I'm going to show you what happens when I have a tree. Now you might say, aha, that branch is as thick as that. You're right. That's, that would be too thick, but we'll just say, Hey, this is contemporary. It doesn't matter. Um, but let's show you a combination of all three of these. Okay. Branches going to these plates. Now these plates will become families of leaves, clumps of leaves is what these will turn into. And so what happens is by combining all three of these, 
the irregular shape, the sponge texture, the form shadow, and the plates, we get a drawing that's going to look like this. Okay? This is just a basic, now this is again, is a caricature of a tree. But what have I done here? I've got this trunk. Okay? This trunk is branching out to these clumps, which is what our original plates were. And if they're lighter, they're in front. If they're darker, they are in back. So this is in back. This is in back. The back shape, back shape, back shape. So, but to each one of these shapes or plates or clumps of leaves, we've got branching systems. Now, instead of just doing one, I've branched some out so that we have, you know, these branches, you know, coming out gently and so forth and so on. And then after I had the trunk with the branches and these plates that then became irregular shapes to become like groupings of leaves. And this right here is the space between those clumps of leaves. Spaces, 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 spaces. Uh, so they're not full everywhere. This would be like some sort of really tall elm or something like that, sort of a tree. Uh, so there's different trees are going to have different things. But we also took... So we've got the branching system. So we got this, and then we made the plates irregular, so they look like leaves. We also have the irregular, you know, and again, these are these are clumps. So I was thinking of them like plates, but then we made them just a little bit jagged, right? Each one of the plates. And we have plates in back and plates in the front. We have branches going to each one. We then put the texture on it. That sponge, te sponge texture was put on here and it just looks kind of leaf-like. So by the time we go, and it's darker over here, those are darker over here, lighter over here. So, and it's getting from dark to medium to light. So we have form shadows. So we have form shadows, we have the branching system, we have the different clumps of leaves, we have the texture, and this all stacks up to something that looks like a tree. So, and again, this is not, of course, a portrait of a tree. This isn't a specific tree that I, this is one I just made up. I just was like, da, 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 and I put all this stuff together, and I got something that looks like a tree. Um, now, this comes out of me having drawn trees for, you know, I've done trees before. And so I, I understand this sounds like, wow, come on, I ain't just going to be able to pull that out. No, but this is to show you that the idea of stacking these different ideas up together will give you a fairly convincing tree. When we're out drawing trees or for painting trees or whatever, we don't have time to do portraits. If you're gonna do a portrait of a tree, you're gonna be there for like three weeks. So you're lucky if you have time to even do something that's this much of a caricature. It's gonna be much more simple normally. Uh, and so we wanna get used to the idea of the idea of a tree. That the, tree, the idea of the tree is that it has form. We can even say, well, it has a basic shape first. And then from that basic shape, we've got form. And then after the form, we've got the fact we want to make it irregular and jagged because it's made out of leaves. Uh, and of course, it's different types of leaves. So of course, a, a weeping willow is not going to look the same as an elm, is not going to look the same as a pine tree. But this is the idea that all trees have form. All trees have some sort of irregular shapes going on because of their needles or the leaves or, anything, or you know, the configuration of the branches. They all have branching systems and they all have, you know, you know, these clumpings of, you know, groupings of leaves or foliage, whatever term we want to use. And so, you know, by doing that, we, we end up with something that looks tree like. All right. So that's the idea. I want, I want you to start thinking and looking for in every tree you draw, look for the branches, look for how they connect to the different clumps. Look, ask if yourself, are the, is it in back or is it in front? If it's front lit, the leaves should be lighter. If it's in the back, the leaves should be darker. Uh, same thing with the branches. If the branches are in back, they're going to be darker. If the branches are in front, they're going to be lighter. So start asking yourself about how those different, you know, are they further or closer uh, to you or from you? Of course, where do these branches start and stop? I've got a branch here that doesn't attach to the tree. That's a big no-no. But anyways, <laughs> I'm like, that branch, wait, where did the branch go? Yeah, I've got to, I would have to, this would have to be changed. So that branch, there's a branch out here, can come from the tree out to the, so missed one there. And that's when you go, aha, well, I missed it. I'll put it in, no big deal. But start thinking about this and looking for it when you draw trees. The assignment for, that I want you to do this week, for those that are in the class, 
I want you to try to do, you know, again, take any shape you want, but the egg shape's easy enough, and put form shadows on it. Then try to take one and make it a little jagged, a little irregular. And of course, we want the spacing difference. So this, the little, this is a little smaller, this is a little bigger, this is a little smaller, this is a little smaller, this is bigger, this dip. You know, this distance here is different from that distance there, from that distance there. Try to make something that, if you repeat stuff too much in nature, it starts to look fake. So you try to try to you know like this little clump here is very very different than this over here. So if we start breaking down the parts of the trees, it's got some, it's similar but it's not the same, and it could be even less similar than what I've got. This still looks like a cotton ball, but then try to put some just some squiggly little, you know, little marks on there, okay, and try to make the marks get go darker, getting lighter, and then try to see if you could try to figure out the plate thing. Again, you can stop the video. Try to take a look at this. If the plates are in back, they're darker. If they're in front, they're just being kept light. There's a little bit of value. This goes a little, little middle value to a little bit darker, a little bit darker as it goes around the corner. So, but the idea of this is just to think of these as just sort of like these flat plates. Uh, there's a couple of sculptures like this down in Phoenix from like the 60s and the 50s, and, and that's what they're doing. It's basically an abstraction of a tree. Uh, so try to try to do this and then try to take all three of these concepts, stack them up together, find a tree in your yard or a photograph of a tree or a tree that you really like or have a connection with or what have you, and try to do a drawing of just the tree. Try to do a study of trees. This is just a general idea of trees. We'll talk more about trees, but since we're drawing landscapes, we have to talk about the idea of dealing with trees. Um, and don't be afraid of them. And you know, they're really, really great stuff. Like I said, go out in, in fall, take a sketchbook and study trees. They have lovely gesture. They, they lean, they sort of, the, the branches dance back and forth. They have rhythms. They have a wonderful design. It's a great way to learn. And if you're into wanting to deal with nature and paint nature and draw nature, you're going to want to know trees because they're everywhere. You know, you say, well, what about on the plains? Well, yeah, okay, if you're in, if you're in prairie where there are no trees, well, then, yeah, there's no trees. But <laughs> there's all kinds of different trees. You know, in the scrubby deserts, you've got the, you know, the junipers and these different sort of scrub oaks and different things like that. You have, you know, the wonderful scrub cedars and other things, you know, and just all kinds of different types of trees. They're wonderful. They're fascinating. Uh, get used to them. The better you can do them, the, the, the better time you'll have. What we've talked about today will really help get you started on the road to doing better trees. We'll talk more about trees later. And so this is just the beginning. We're just barely scratching the surface. But this has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. I hope you'll be, get out there and be more creative. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.